has emerged. That's according to the British Medical Journal. A 32-year-old... Austin Hoffman has been successfully... ...hot weather has killed tens of thousands of fish in rivers and lakes. The Environment Agency says there's been less... ...dogs to be enemies, but this is not the case for one feline family in Liverpool. Hopes when they get a bit bigger, one wonders. Mm. Uh, it is 8.34. Here's what's coming up later in the programme. One year on. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, it's sport time. Cat's here to talk about, what, transfer sagas? Yes. Well, it's been quite a quiet transfer window so far, hasn't it? But if Bale, Suarez and Rooney all move before the transfer window shuts mm. on the 2nd of September, big it could names, get quite lively, big couldn't names, it? Big names, big headlines. Big money as well. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mean anything, of course where the urn is concerned, but no. it does mean that England Pride. could win the series. Yeah, and the Aussies will be struggling like mad. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be so easy now, is it? Like, no, not after, no, not after the Old Trafford test. They mm. certainly bounced back, didn't they? And with back-to-back -back series... Ash I know you're staying here, Kat. Uh, she's won more titles and medals than any other British gymnast, but Beth Tweddle has decided it is time to retire. She's stepping down from the sport to concentrate on her academy, which opens in the Olympic part in London next month. We'll be talking to Beth in just a moment. First, here's a reminder. He's looking forward to seeing it as well, aren't you? I can tell. <laughs> London 2012, you remember this? Now, listen, you're going to miss all that, aren't you? Yeah, of course I am. I'm going to miss... We know that you've worked incredibly hard over all these years. So give us a sense of, of the kind of hours that you were having to do. Um, leading up to a major... Do you know what? It's, it's really... Young people have got into gymnastics and it's you they think about and, and look to. That, that's quite a responsibility, Beth, isn't it? It is. I mean... An Olympic team, wasn't it? It London? really was. I mean, obviously... What's been the change, do you think? Is the way that you're, you've been coached or what has been the change? Do you know what? The biggest thing is the belief within... Assume ...that gymnasts start when they're three. <laughs> or, yeah, no, this most seven... gymnasts do. I was was actually quite a late starter when it yeah. came to gymnastics, but I was always upset. Women's hockey player who had a terrible jaw injury, uh -huh. broken jaw in fact. Injuries are part of gymnastic life almost more than any other sport, aren't they? Injuries are part of... Just a little bit about the future then, because you've got your own gymnastics academies now. Um, yeah, basically. They might already be at <laughs> one. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, now, how are you going to keep fit yourself in the coming years? Do what do you recommend for a regime? <sighs> I still will be still doing that. As still well. doing that just for fun. Um, <laughs> 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 and uh, if I fall over, it doesn't. Sign an autograph okay. for my 13-year-old granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned yours. I'm going to mention mine. Oh. So I have your promise on that. No worries. I'll sort that. Thank Good you luck and lots of luck with the rest. Thank of you very thank much. Beth you. Tweddle, thank you so much. Thanks, Kat, as well. Uh, first, there was cold spring, then the summer heat wave, and all of a sudden, along came the rain. It feels like we've been experiencing some wild weather this year. What impact, though, is it having on farmers? This year's harvest could be make or break for many of them as they struggle to make up for last year's disastrous yields. In a moment, we'll speak to Sophie Van Bruggen, who's at a fruit. <laughs> Sophie, and before her, Jenny. Uh, with there be more rain today, how the strawberries going to grow? Carol can tell us that and more. Morning, Carol. Good morning. Good morning. We have got rain in the forecast. Thanks, Carol. Yeah, that sounds just about right to me, that sort of temperature. Now, with the Mars rover continuing to make new discoveries and space tourism now a possibility, our fascination with the universe appears to have been rekindled. One of the biggest questions, of course, for scientists has always been whether extraterrestrial life exists. Now it seems the answer might actually lie right here on Earth deep in a mine in the northeast of England, as our science reporter Rebecca Morell reports. Fifty years ago today, the men behind the great train robbery were putting their final plans into place. Led by Bruce Reynolds, the gang escaped with cash worth nearly £50 million in today's money. Yes, it was two and a half million at the time, wasn't it? Five decades on, Bruce's son Nick, along with Christopher Pickard, who helped... Uh, gang member Ronnie Biggs write his autobiography, have penned a book about the crime which they say still holds many mysteries. We'll speak to the men in a moment of the most infamous events in British history. Well, Nick Reynolds and uh, Chris, the, who's helped uh, Ronnie Biggs write his autobiography, join us now. Well, first of all, Nick, what do you remember of your father growing up? Did you have any suspicion of what he was up to? Not at all, really. Um, we were on the run for five years, and to me... You, you obviously had no... You were very young, as you say. You had no clue about what happened, the background or anything like that. That must have been quite shocking for you that your dad was actually being treated, first of all, as a criminal. Well, it was when he was arrested, yes. Um, in this. Um, it had affected lots of different people um, in many ways. Um, and in some ways, you know, we call it the great train robbery. I mean, it was a criminal act, wasn't it? 
Oh, yes, I mean, I think uh, Nick had saved from his lives and so on. There's nothing glamorous about what your father did or what these other No, nope, but no, nope. they took a chance, they risked their liberty. Train robbery or so? No, I've unfortunately, I've been sort of... Uh... Realised, did they, um, Christopher, um, how much money was on board the train, did they? Chris, they, I mean, they left the clues at Leatherslade Farm. And they, that, which led to the, certainly, if not the immediate arrest, the identification of them pretty quickly. Well, well yeah, I think, no, what we found... Uh, Jack Slipper, I think he was called. Jack, yeah, or Jack, Jack Slipper, who chased Slipper. Ron around the world. They were the policemen who made their names, but also mm. their investigations weren't always very clever either, were they, Chris? No, they... Um, oh. And their book, The Great Train Robbery, is out right now. Faser from Ndubs will be here in a few minutes. Yes, he's going to talk to us quite strangely, possibly, about his love of classical music. First, though, a last quick look at what is happening where you are. See you in a minute. Well, first of all, Nick, what do you remember of your father growing up? Did you have any suspicion of what he was up to? Not at all, really. Um, we were on the run for five years, and to me... You, you obviously had no... You were very young, as you say. You had no clue about what happened, the background or anything like that. That must have been quite shocking for you that your dad was actually being treated, first of all, as a criminal. Well, it was when he was arrested, yes. Um, in this. Um, it had affected lots of different people um, in many ways. Um, and in some ways, you know, we call it the great train robbery. I mean, it was a criminal act, wasn't it? Oh, yes. I mean, I think uh, Nick had saved from his lives and so on. There's nothing glamorous about what your father did or what these other... No, nope, but no. Nope. They took a chance. They risked their... Liberty. Train robbery or so? No, I've unfortunately, I've been sort of... Uh... Realised, did they, um, Christopher, um, how much money was on board the train, did they? Chris, they, I mean, they left the clues at Leatherslade Farm. And they, that, which led to the, certainly, if not the immediate arrest, the identification of them pretty quickly. Well, well yeah, I think, no, what we found... Uh, Jack Slipper, I think he was called. Jack, yeah, or Jack, Jack Slipper, who chased Slipper. Ron around the world. They were the policemen who made their names, but also mm. their investigations weren't always very clever either, were they, Chris? No, they... Um, oh. And their book, The Great Train Robbery, is out right now. Faser from Ndubs will be here in a few minutes. Yes, he's going to talk to us quite strangely, possibly, about his love of classical music. First, though, a last quick look at what is happening where you are. See you in a minute. He's right, his autobiography. Join us now. Well, first of all, Nick, what do you remember of your father growing up? Did you have any suspicion of what he was up to? Not at all, really. Um, we were on the run for five years, and to me... You, you obviously had no... You were very young, as you say. You had no clue about what happened, the background or anything like that. That must have been quite shocking for you that your dad was actually being treated, first of all, as a criminal. Well, it was when he was arrested, yes. Um, in this. Um, it had affected lots of different people um, in many ways. Um, and in some ways, you know, we call it the great train robbery. I mean, it was a criminal act, wasn't it? Oh, yes. I mean, I think uh, Nick had saved from his lives and so on. There's nothing glamorous about what your father did or what these other... No, nope, but no. Nope. They took a chance. They risked their... Liberty. Train robbery or so? No, I've unfortunately, I've been sort of... Uh... Realised, did they, um, Christopher, um, how much money was on board the train, did they? Chris, they, I mean, they left the clues at Leatherslade Farm. And they, that, which led to the, certainly, if not the immediate arrest, the identification of them pretty quickly. Well, well yeah, I think, no, what we found... Uh, Jack Slipper, I think he was called. Jack, yeah, or Jack, Jack Slipper, who chased Ron around the world. They were the policemen who made their names, but also mm. their investigations weren't always very clever either, were they, Chris? No, they... Um, oh. And their book, The Great Train Robbery, is out right now. Faser from Ndubs will be here in a few minutes. Yes, he's going to talk to us quite strangely, possibly, about his love of classical music. First, though, a last quick look at what is happening where you